What's up guys? Welcome back to News Wave. There were some really big things that happened yesterday. One big thing in particular, but first I want to say I sent out two emails for the people who won those clocks. One person got back to me, another person has not. Please check your email inbox to see if I sent you a message on the email that you signed up for the competition with. But let's just get started here guys because I really want to talk about this announcement. So for the past couple months or so we've had nothing but Super Nintendo Classic talks because to us even if it wasn't for Eurogamer kind of talking about it I think a lot of us would have been at least assuming that maybe one would show up at some point in time I don't think a lot of us before Eurogamer said anything that we would see it the following year we also saw it on Microsoft Survey where they were like hey what do you think about the Super Nintendo Classic and we were like oh well maybe it's a thing well, it looks like, yes, today, Nintendo came out and said a Super Nintendo Classic is on the way sooner than you guys think. September 29th, actually, which places it just over three months away from now, which is amazing. And it's going to be a pretty good price at $80, which is great because it actually comes with 21 games, one of which was never released. So let's go down the list of games that they have here for the Super Nintendo. They get started with Contra 3, Donkey Kong Country, Earthbound, Final Fantasy 3, F-Zero, Kirby Superstar, Kirby's Dream Course, Legend of Zelda Link to the Past, Mega Man X, Secret of Mana, Star Fox, Star Fox 2, Street Fighter 2 Turbo Hyper Fighting, Super Castlevania 4, Super Ghouls and Ghosts, Super Mario Kart, Mario RPG, Super Mario World, Super Metroid, Super Punch-Out, and Yoshi's Island. And yeah, that's, that is an all-star lineup of games if I've ever seen one. And the one that, of course, probably sticks out to you like it sticks out to me is Star Fox 2. And the reason for that is because Star Fox 2 never actually released to anyone in the public. Of course, people, developers in particular, inside Nintendo, said the game was finished and even leaked out online. People finished it, translated it, and you could technically play it if you get someone to make it on a, a Super Nintendo cartridge with an FX chip. But it's still not an official release, and it looks like Nintendo is taking a game that I think all of us would think is just buried by Nintendo at this point, right? I mean, they would. we didn't think they'd ever look at it and go, let's release it because, you know, it's going to make us money. This is like, this is perfect for them because it's going to be a game that they can put all over the place. In fact, they've already thrown it on the front of the Super Nintendo uh, Classic marketing as the game. This is the reason to buy this system because it has Star Fox 2. What happened to Star Fox 2 though? That, that, that's really a question a lot of people have asked for quite some time because it was slated to release back in 1995 before the 64 release, but it was so close to it, allegedly... Developers were saying, of Star Fox 2, developers were saying that Nintendo didn't want to release a 3D game on the Super Nintendo so close to the, obviously, 64 coming out, but also because the PS1 and the Saturn were on the market and anything 3D that the Super Nintendo would do would pale in comparison to what the PlayStation 1 and even the Saturn at the time could do. So it just, it wouldn't look very good on their part. So now we're left with a new system coming out from Nintendo alongside, of course, them pushing their Switch units and they're still going to push the 3DS along. So they'll technically have have like three different categories of systems and technically more than that if you count something like the 2DS Excel. So Nintendo is going to be stretched I think pretty thin in terms of production but they are saying according to Kotaku that they are going to provide more Super Nintendo classics than they did for the NES classic by a significant amount. Now if we go back and look the NES classic apparently was around 2 million maybe a little more than that units overall in its lifespan of what between November and uh, April the following year. So in that small amount of time they did push out 2 million units. They've already said that the Super Nintendo Classic is a limited time thing. So don't think that they're going to keep this around for a while. You need to be very aware that if you want it, you need to go get it as soon as possible. Like with it, I would get it as soon as you can in that first week, that first month, you know, of time of it being on the market, go get one because as soon as they start to dry up, scalpers are going to do what they do best and get extra money, two, three times amount of extra money from that system. So I'm hoping that they end up putting out somewhere around 5 million, maybe that might, if that's overshooting, maybe 4 million units uh, for the Super Nintendo Classic. I think right in that mark, it would be enough units for everyone who actually wants one, should be able to find one, right? As long as scalpers aren't out there buying 20 at a time at Walmart, because that could be the number you'd see in stores if they do end up producing that many at a time, maybe 20 units, 20 units, 20 units then we should all be able to get one, right? We won't have to pay an arm and a leg like the NES Classic is at $300. Hopefully we won't have to do that. And I'm, I'm, man, please Nintendo, just put out enough. I need to make sure I get one. Now the really interesting thing here is that 
it looks like Nintendo has made an emulator of some kind that can support the Super FX chip well. Now, I'm not saying emulators out now don't do the job, but they're not 100%, even the best ones, emulators that are, are not 100% with the Super FX chip, whereas Nintendo knows their hardware. They're going to release an emulator with this thing because that's what it's going to run on. Let's be realistic here. They don't have to even change the hardware from the NES Classic. In fact, I'd be shocked if they did. They're going to put probably the same system out in a different shell with a different uh, back office like OS looking thing on the front. Obviously, they have to change out manuals and, and probably display settings, things like that. But for the most part, if it's anything different, I would be shocked. But they've probably coded a 100% compatible emulator for Super FX chips, which is great because when the system comes out, let's be realistic, people are going to hack it, people are going to soft mod it, and they're probably going to pull that emulator off. And at that point, we'll probably have a 100% working Super Nintendo emulator, like across the board. And that is amazing. That is really cool to have that for the Super FX chip, because then people can do some crazy stuff probably without worry of uh, compatibility with emulators for things like ROM hacks for Star Fox. This could be really neat. I also like that the Super Nintendo Classic will come with two controllers, not one, so that pretty much eliminates that entire uh, crazy market that we dealt with with the NES Classic. You know what I'm talking about if you got one. The controllers, instead of being $10, ended up being $40, because they're impossible to find. The third-party ones were terrible. They weren't even good. And what's great is apparently the cables are going to be five feet long, which is about two feet longer than the ones we're dealing with the NES Classic. Still not crazy long, but let's, I mean, really, the Super Nintendo controllers in the first place weren't very long anyway. I am slightly jealous that the uh, European markets, and I assume Japanese markets, will be getting what arguably is the better looking Super Nintendo, basically one that looks just like the Super Famicom which I still think is a better looking system. I grew up with the Super Nintendo, so I'm fine with getting this one in America, but man, that one looks great over in Europe. Strangely though, apparently that one doesn't come with a power cord, which is odd because the one in America does come with a power cord. I'm not really sure why they have eliminated that. I, I guess it's gonna run on a micro uh, USB cable anyway, so everyone has them, it's not a big deal. Overall though, I am, thrilled with the Super Nintendo Classic. I think it's going to be an awesome system. I had no idea, just like everyone else, that Star Fox 2 was going to make an appearance on it. This is going to be awesome. They even threw in a little a little unlock where you have to play through the first Star Fox level to unlock Star Fox 2. So they do have like that little Easter egg unlock to get Star Fox 2. And it's just, this is going to be so cool. I am really looking forward to it. These games will look really nice on your flat screen TV, much like the NES Classic did. I'll be curious if it sticks with 720p, or maybe it does jump to 1080p. It's it's $20 more, but I think it's completely worth it with the games on there. There's some feature-packed experiences. If, if you've never played Earthbound, go buy it. If you've never played Final Fantasy VI, go buy this. I, I wish Chrono Trigger, if Chrono Trigger was there, that would have completed this entire thing. But maybe licensing, maybe cost, was it just wasn't gonna work. But we do get things like Mario RPG, Mega Man X. I mean, it, it's, it looks great. And I am excited. I mean, September 29th cannot get here soon enough. I want to get this thing. I want to pop it open, take a look inside. And of course, I want to play the games. Thank you, Nintendo. I'm excited. The Super Nintendo Classic, September 29th, 80 bucks. I'll be there first in line. Now, jumping over to some other news, because yes, I know... There were some other things that happened, but I know everyone's like really stuck on the Super Nintendo Classic right now. Let's talk about a few other things, specifically Sega Forever. This is interesting because we talked about this at length, right, when it first was coming out, about how Sega had this interesting plan to use Unity as like a, uh, as like a platform for their Sega games where they're going to release Sonic and Kid Chameleon and Virtua Tennis even on the Dreamcast. Well, apparently a lot of people who are really reviewing these games, downloading them, trying them out, are finding that their phones are not playing these games correctly most of the time. In fact, there's a lot of technical issues going around. They've even gotten to the point where John Linneman over at Digital Foundry does a lot of the retro stuff, had some interesting words to say on Twitter. Do not touch those Sega Forever games. Lousy emulation in a Unity wrapper. Not good at all. I'm not really sure how... Others have been able to emulate really Sega games better than Sega themselves. It makes no sense. I know they want to tie in ads, so they have to do some interesting programming choices on their side, but it just seems weird that people can emulate these games better than the company who created and produced these games. It makes zero sense. As we're seeing with Nintendo, they are making some really some some grade A emulators with their NES Classic and now the Super Nintendo Classic we assume to be. But if you go on the Virtual Console, those are all pretty much emulators written for things like the Wii and the Wii U, and they run N64 games, for example, great. And we don't have an N64 emulator that's really that good. So 
I don't know what Sega's deal is. I don't know if engineers or whoever the, the programmers they're hiring for this stuff don't know what they're doing. It just seems odd that they just cannot seem to emulate these Sega games that should be able to run on phones no problem. At all. Like, how is Virtua Tennis, a Dreamcast game, going to run on phones when they're having a hard time getting Sega Genesis games to run on phones? Uh, it's going to be interesting. I, I want to see how glitchy that is because I have a feeling, based on what we're seeing right now, that might end up being a glitchy mess. And our last bit of news today, guys, comes from Retroblox. Now, if you don't know what Retroblox is, it was an interesting startup. It was a great idea where these creators were going to come up with a system that was going to play, like, all these consoles. It was modular even, so you could buy the modules you want based on the games you wanted to play. They were saying it was going to be a mixture of all hardware and some emulation, but it was going to play things like Super Nintendo, Nintendo, Genesis, PlayStation 1 discs, Saturn discs. Uh, they even went as far as, say, Neo Geo CD now, and, and Turbo Graphics. It was basically going to be a massive retro system for the collection, so you can play all your games on one system. But like a few months ago, communications kind of stopped and they kind of went dark for a while. Their Kickstarter was supposed to start in April. It didn't. And people were really concerned that this was going to turn into another Coleco Chameleon. But they seem to have resurfaced with some good news that I think everyone who really wanted this project to succeed are going to be really happy about. So it turns out what happened was they had to change their name. Retroblox, for some reason, was a name they could not use. So they've now changed their name to Polymega. Not only that, they've said that they've actually secured enough venture capital to actually create and really put to market these systems. So they're not gonna start a Kickstarter apparently. This is all according to them on their forums. They're just gonna go right to market and we'll be able to pre-order this item later on this year, which is interesting. I did not see that one coming. In fact, they've shown us now the system working completely. They've even shown a quick comparison, guys, of a Neo Geo CD game loading super fast compared to the old one. Now, if you don't know, Neo Geo CD games take forever to load. I'm talking like minutes at times, guys. It's insane. Whereas the Neo Geo CD game on the Retroblox or the Polymega took seconds. It's great. So it's actually going to make those games playable. So what you do is you take your disc and you pop it in. You take your cartridge, you pop it in, and it plays it perfectly. This is all according to them. So I am looking forward to this. I like the idea of the modular design where you can kind of build the system how you want. You're not locked into all of these weird slots everywhere, and it looks sleek. It's a good looking system. Now, how well it will it work? Then, I mean, that, that's kind of, that's for the public to find out, I guess, when we get it, because that's kind of how it works. It always sounds great at first, and then it comes out, and then all these problems are found by the, the hundreds or thousands of users that try it out. So, We'll see when it comes out, but right now it's looking very promising. I'm glad they're back on track because this sounds so cool. And I got a little bummed out, to be honest, when I saw that they were kind of disappeared and everyone figured that they had just kind of run away from the idea and the project because it sounded like, seriously, like the, the, what they were really proposing sounded almost Herculean to most of us. Like, wow, it's going to be like all of this stuff in one like, you can put a PS1 disc and, like, a Saturn disc and a Sega CD. Like, all this stuff they were saying you could do with these different modules they come out with. But it looks like it's happening. It looks like it's later this year. So I'm going to keep an eye on it. I'll let you guys know what the price is, which we still don't know. I'm sure that... I'm sure that'll be expensive, and whenever pre-order dates start, I'll let you guys know. And that's it for Newswave today, guys. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Let me think about anything we talked about today. I know it wasn't it wasn't the longest Newswave, but man, the Super Nintendo Classic, I think, took over the news yesterday. I mean, that was what everyone was talking about everywhere. Stuff was going crazy over the system, and with good reason. It's a great deal at 80 bucks, two controllers, 21 games, including one game that never came out. That makes a lot of sense. It's going to be hard to find, even if they produced 5 million of them, it's still going to be hard to find. So make sure you call your local video game stores and see if anybody is pre-ordering these things, because it's it's not going to be easy to find. Also, let me know if you think of Retroblox or Polymega, as they're known now. Let me know if you think this actual system is going to come out, and if it'll be as good as they say. It sounds cool, but things always sound good in theory, and then they come out, and they tend to disappoint. I'm very curious what your thoughts on this. That's it for now, guys. I'll see you next time.